Uh, we're on a path to finishing the NDA uh, this week. It's been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of How are you feeling now, sir? Uh, How are you feeling now? I'm fine. Have you seen a doctor? Are you going to Any see idea him? what happened? Huh? Any idea what happened? I'm fine. That's the Dehydrated? Part. <laughs> Gotta watch those sandbags. Thank you, Senator. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. Um, were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. Ruling that was made in the Ripple case that XRP is only a security when sold to institutional investors, not so with retail investors. I know you've previously said you were disappointed by that ruling. The SEC has also said that it intends to seek further review. So does that mean you are going to appeal it? Can you elaborate on your thoughts around that ruling? Kaylee, great question. But the commission, uh, I'm, I'm one of five commissioners. Mm -hmm. The commission has not uh, uh, acted on that. And uh, uh, if the staff makes a recommendation, we'll, ha we'll have a discussion of it, and we'll take it up then, but I don't ha really have anything more on you for you for that. Look, this field of crypto investing, uh, um, a lot of investors uh, should be aware it's not only a highly speculative asset class, it's also one that they currently should not assume that they're getting the protections of the securities laws, even though the securities laws apply to many of those tokens without prejudging anyone. But you as investors are not getting the full, fair, and truthful disclosure. And the platforms, the intermediaries, are doing things that we would never in a day allow or think the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ would do. The platforms often are commingling and trading against you and have market makers uh, uh, that are on the other side of your trades. And we don't allow that in the rest of our securities markets. And right. uh, the securities laws are there to protect you. And that's right now, there's a, this is a field rife with fraud, rife with hucksters. And there are good faith actors as well, but there are far too many that aren't. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And guys, we know the NWO are the master magicians. Order out of chaos. Guys, yesterday we had McConnell talk about the NDAA, but he's freezing. Now guys, we know all the things they like the stuff in the NDAA bill. If you have my NWO book, you understand. But the topic was, of course, McConnell freezing. He comes back smiling, and we know that's an NWO joke. But then we had the UFO hearings. Then we had Jerome Powell. We had the bank man in court. Still talking about Twitter going to X. Sam Altman's world coin. Hunter Biden's plea deal. So guys, all the distractions going on, but you got to stay focused. We know this is all set up for the digital transformation. And we have Gary Gensler in the house on crypto, still doing the talking points. These exchanges are co-mingling funds. They're betting against you. And guys, we do know that does happen on the stock market. We know all the illegal things that go on. And then he talks about the power of AI. And we know how powerful blockchain AI robots, algorithms, and drones. And with McConnell freezing, they're saying that these politicians are too old. And now they're talking about banning politicians from buying individual stocks. Guys, they know the stock market is about to change. That's the reason why BlackRock's Larry Fink keeps talking about ETFs. He knows that everything is going to be tokenized and put on blockchain. 
and that's including the politicians, because you won't need them anymore. Blockchain is the new politician. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now, guys, we have Standard Charter says that Bitcoin is going to hit 120000 by the end of 2024, and crypto winter is over. And do I think crypto winter is over? No, I do not. But I'm not your financial advice, not financial advice. Please do your own research. We do know the fourth industrial revolution switch is about to be turned on. But then we also know the drums are about to start beating. And as the robots, algorithms, and drones take over, we're going to enter in hyperdeflation. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And guys, don't forget to pay attention to that Japanese yen. We know Japan holds a lot of United States debt, and we know they're leading us in this fourth industrial revolution, where we're going to see the fall of America to Babylon and the rise of China the dragon with the emerging markets with that digital yuan backed by that digital SDR. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows when it comes to the new world order, it's all planned. Dowdy, you have a wonderful day. I think that... Uh, predictive data analytics, including artificial intelligence, is the transformative technology of our times. And every bit as transformative as the internet or mass production of the automobile 100 years ago. Now, what are we trying to address? When an investment advisor or a broker works with you as an investor, they're not supposed to put their interest, the advisor's interest, ahead of yours, Kaylee, as an investor. Mm -hmm. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that the technology aligns with that standard, that the technology that can predict about each and every one of us so much about how we might react to a little behavioral prompt or a little nudge, how we might react, that they're putting our interest as an investor in the right place and not putting themselves ahead of it. Uh, if I could just give a little bit more, it's about material uh, incidents. So if a company lost a factory and that factory is wiped out and that factory is uh, material to its operations, let's say because it's lost to a hurricane, investors need to know when they're buying and selling the stock. In a similar way, if you had a cyber incident that management determines is material, you know, hundreds of millions of files lost or something or compromised, investors benefit from that disclosure. But giving businesses just four days to that, disclose that. That's what we have in our uh, rules today. Currently, four business days, if you have, uh, like if that factory, mm. you know, was wiped out by a hurricane, to put out the material information and, and so that's consistent with rules on the books. And by the way, many companies have been making such disclosures. Some haven't. It's been fragmented. And we thought it was important to bring some consistency to it around these uh, material events. What is your updated price target for Bitcoin at the end of 2024 now? It's higher than 100000 I think somewhere in the 100 to 120,000 range by the end of the end of next year is now looking likely. For sure, winter is over in terms of crypto. Um, I called that a couple of months ago, and I stick by that today. Bitcoin's uh, core use case is when there are concerns in the trad fire sector. We saw that a few months ago, uh, and just now, and and as uh, Mackenzie just mentioned earlier, we're getting close to the next halving uh, cycle. That's in about nine months from now. In previous cycles. Around six months out from that, Bitcoin prices have started heading sharply higher. I expect the same this time. It's partly on the back of that core use okay. case around the trad, trad price sector as well, Are but we also because Bitcoin that? miners should do better. Increase in the Japanese yen because you know prior to that, a week before, two weeks ago, the um, Bank of Japan basically stayed mum on all of those reports that suggested that they were not going to change the yield curve control. But today, we've seen a rush of positions um, to hedge against yen strength because you know we're seeing 
you know, the Nikkei report, like you mentioned earlier, about how they could potentially um, drop the yield curve control or allow flexibility around the half percent that Rebecca just mentioned. So I think, you know, investors are not as convinced that we're going to see inaction by the BOJ. They're still trying to get a good feel about this okay. new BOJ governor. And so I think, you know, leading up to, we got a couple hours to the BOJ meeting, we're going to see ongoing yen strength. And I think there's a very good chance we could actually see a move by the Bank of Japan that leads to a more significant rise in the currency. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going. We're recovering, but to a different economy, and it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of the huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, oh, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial s seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Crypto teacher and the New World Order book, plus the three kids' books, is time to re educate. Also, Nuno Crypto's Coinbase Bet You Bonus. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, 
We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.